you know, people ask me like, Raul, you share your, why don't you share like the bad days? Like, I think I reserve my bad days and I share with the clients that I have on my, the guys who hold the space for me. I'm not yeah. complaining about my bad days in, into social media. And that, that's just, I have this belief that I have bad moments. I don't have bad days. I have bad moments and, and those bad moments, I don't allow those bad moments to turn into bad days. I was days. just going to say that when we have a bad or a fight or something, it doesn't turn, like before it would be like two, three days that we could be mad at each other or something with the kids. If something is negative, like we catch it right away, we address it, and then we find a solution. We, and we, fi we find what the pattern, we find the awareness. Welcome to the Got Money and Sex Podcast. My name is Raul Velasquez, and I'm here with my beautiful co-host. Vivian Velasquez. I'm so excited with you to be here Season with you. Season two of the Got Money and Sex Podcast. Let's just introduce ourselves, reintroduce ourselves to the people who haven't listened to the podcast, or maybe you're yes. listening to this through iTunes, time. Spotify, yeah. or you're watching this for the first time. Yes. My name is Raul Velasquez, and my wife here, Vivian Velasquez, we've been married for how long? We just celebrated 20 years of marriage, which is absolutely unbelievable for me. 20 years of anniversary, 20 years yeah. of being married. That's, that's amazing. I mean, everybody that, that I talk to tells me that that seems like almost impossible nowadays to be married for, for that long. I know, that's why we had to celebrate it. We just came back from an amazing celebration, which we'll share with you guys a little bit later. But yeah, we um, take our time to do this podcast because we really believe in God, we believe in money and we believe in sex and it's not necessarily like um in that order in that order it just that's seems right. it just seems cool to say god yes. money and sex but it's actually so no easy. we do believe I, I think we do believe in that order i mean god god, god for money me, and sex for you god, god is first yeah. in our lives and when yes, you talk about is. god it, it could be the your religion it could be energy it could be the universe we believe in in, in god you know we're, we have a christian background so so we do believe in the higher power but we don't want to put that on you. We want to make sure that every single one of you just believes in something higher than yourselves. That's right. It is, you know, the, when we talk about God is having a higher purpose, having a higher vision, having a higher mission. Like we all have to, you know, really like look within ourselves and see that this is, it all doesn't start and end with us. There's always a higher being and a higher power out and there. And I also feel like God is in everything. And it's not necessarily just like, you know, for us, it's, it's Jesus Christ. But God is in nature and he's the moon and the stars and he's like this whole universe. So not necessarily what we believe in is we're trying to impose this on anybody else, but that's what we believe in. That's the, the force that has helped us to get here where we are today. And I think, you know, we give him credit for everything so yeah it is god comes first i know money for you is really second and then sex well actually um, no sex for me comes right before oh, money oh okay, yeah. okay so we, so we maybe probably we will change, change the, the, we'll change the, the, the name title. to god sex and, and money. money but it, but money is really production i mean for every man we want to feel like yeah. we are productive we are creating and building an yeah. empire we, we're really doing something that's going to create an impact and yes. I, I know that i coach hundreds of entrepreneurs and they all have the same belief which is we're here for a greater purpose yes. we're here to create a difference we're here to create yes. an impact i don't think anybody who wants to to make it in business is doing it just to fill his pockets and just to look out for himself i think you know there is a uh, uh, an energy around the world of entrepreneur right now that people it's cool to be an entrepreneur but I know 20 years ago when I started becoming an entrepreneur right after we got married it wasn't cool to be an entrepreneur I, well, actually, I think because it also takes a lot of work and a lot of people give up because they think like it's going to be something easy you're going to make your own hours and then but it, it's not really that's not the case because an entrepreneur has to give a lot, like 100% of who he is, and there is no boss telling him what to do. Like, you know, I've seen you, and you're an amazing um, entrepreneur because you run your businesses like like no other. You're the most persistent person that I know. I mean, you your work ethic is amazing, and not just because you're my husband, <laughs> but because you are an amazing Thank you. I, 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 love, I love to hear my, my wife say the persistent word because I tell her, like, when I die, I want in my tombstone to say, here lies a more persistent, committed motherfucker that I ever lived. Because <laughs> I, I believe that in order for you to succeed as an entrepreneur, you have to be able to be committed. You have to be yes. able to, yes. to have a work ethic. And I think uh, when, when I started in my career as an entrepreneur, it wasn't cool to be an entrepreneur because people who were entrepreneurs were guys who didn't have an education probably, didn't have any money to go to college, or didn't have any resources, and entrepreneurship was the only way to go. You know, when mm -hmm. I started as a real estate entrepreneur and investor, 
you know, people like look at me like, thing. okay, what was, you know, what are you doing? Like, you didn't go to college, you don't have an education. And nowadays, 20 years later, it's cool to be an entrepreneur. Like, now people want to start yeah. their own business. And I think yeah. it's a shift, a shift of, of being your, having a purpose, having a calling. So when we talk about money, we talk about really your capacity to produce, your ability to make an impact, your ability to bring value into the marketplace. That sounds amazing. I love that. And then also like, you know, having having the wisdom to know what to do with your money, because a lot of the times in it that this has happened for us, it's like we make money, but we've made money. And where did the money go? And a lot of the times, like if we don't have like the value that what money is, the value that we could bring to the money that we've created Mm -hmm. and not be good stewards with our money, then it's like it goes all over the place. So I love I love the foundation that we're building even with our kids, because you know, not too long ago, we didn't have that value for the money. We worked really hard. And then it's like, where did the money go? And now I see with my kids, like we have two beautiful kids, my boy and my girl, and they're both just so conscious about money. And it's funny because I'm, I'm the one that loves to spend. And, and Abigail, she always tells me, she's like, mom, do you really need that? Or do you just want it? (laughs) And I'm like, holy cow, like, yes, this little girl has to bring up you know like what i've been teaching her well we live at home it's like do i really need it or do i really want it am i just going to spend this money just you know frivolously or am i going to be a good steward what god has given you with the hard work that we put into it so it's just like money has just so it's such a it's not it's a simple foundation but it has so much that's attached to it i think it's also the mindset of money you know, we've made a lot of money. We also lost a lot of money. Like, yeah. like you said, like we've had millions, we've made millions and we also lost millions. And it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, shit, where did the money go? Yeah. And I think that it, it only until the recent years that we actually come to realize that after everything, the abundance, emotion and feeling of being abundance is what creates the value, is what creates the money. You know, yeah. I coach some other guys that, that right now are working with me and, and I, and I teach them to actually let go of the attachment of wanting to have more because mm-hmm. it's never going to be enough you're never going right. to be rich enough you're never going to be handsome enough you're never going to be you know young enough or whatever enough like for the mind is never enough the same thing with yeah. money if we're constantly chasing money we're going to be running around in circles but if we are attracting the abundance in our lives and even a little bit of money it goes a long way i mean i remember growing up you know as an immigrant here my mom <laughs> you know they made like i look back it's like how do they live yeah. with the money that they made yeah. It's like, you know, we, the, the, the money that they made, it lasted for, for everyone, for the whole month that we were in vacation. We were, I mean, actually, we were not taking the vacations that we we'll take now, but we were actually taking time with the family. So yeah. I never felt that we were anything less than anybody. Yeah. I knew that we were different because we kind of, you know, we were immigrants, <laughs> but my mother, my dad made the money kind of like stretched it. They stretched yeah. it. So I, I think that when, we, when you listen to this podcast on this message, when we talk about money, it's not about like, how do we make more money? How do we, you know, keep no. more money? It's how do you live in an abundance mindset, an abundance lifestyle that you don't have to really be worried about, you know, how much money you're making or, or taking. It's about how much can you produce? What's the value that you could bring to the marketplace so you could live in an abundant life? That's beautiful. And then the next thing too, like what we have done with our kids and we do with ourselves is like, God gives us so much money you know like we live in right now we're in a place where we feel abundant an abundance i mean and not to say that there's always a next level because we are growing we're never at this place where we say like okay we are we've arrived like i've never felt that yet hopefully i never will (laughs) and um god gives us so much and there's so much abundance right now in our life and at the same time it's like who else needs to be blessed with that so part of like contribution and that's something beautiful also that we've taught our kids and i i love alejandro when he says that about me like oh mom or like wherever you go you always have something to give and and i and i'm you know i was taken by that because it's not too long ago that i didn't have anything to give maybe because i felt so empty and depleted of where i was in my life and right now where i am it's like i'm always thinking of how can I contribute to this world? Like, how can how can we give a little bit more? So I love that my kids are are watching. They're taking that in. So that's that's really part of our lives. That's really who we are, who I am as a person. You know, God is our everything, money and sex. And sex is not necessarily just sex. And I know like it sounds very shallow, but it's very important in our lives. And I think it has a lot to do more with the connection, the connection and the passion that we have as a couple. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, we're, we're celebrating 20 years and I know a lot of couples, 
in in our sphere of influence that are, are celebrating 20, 25 years, and then I see them and they're not really in a place where I would like to be. So I really wanted to take this this year especially is like to celebrate because we worked our butts off to get to where we are today like it's not easy marriage is not easy relationships are not easy our relationship has not been easy but it's so worth it like it's so rewarding to get to this place today and look at you and tell you like I love you like I truly do love you and I want to spend 20 more and 20 more let's see how we feel about but, each but other but I, I want you to i want you to emphasize on that baby because here's the reality everything takes fucking work and time it, it takes work it takes patience time. i mean we just talked and talking about it we were celebrating our 20 years like we probably wouldn't have gotten to this place if right. we didn't go through hell yeah and that's what i want the listeners to understand that we're not coming here with all the answers we're not coming here saying that we made it we're not coming here to tell you like we have the magic people coming here because i wish i would have had something like this yes but we were going through our fucking hell yes i and wish i would have had somebody right. telling me that this is not going to be easy that if you want to stay married you got to fucking continue to show up as a man and continue to yeah. show up and hold the space and and produce and and be able to work on yourself yeah and i think that's one of the biggest reasons why we this the second season's coming up again like this is the second season like so exciting but because we want the listeners out there that are married that are in a relationship to really understand that it's not easy i think you know in the society where we are now is like they they make a seem um social media magazines people if it didn't if it's not all beautiful painted like um you know Perfect, a fairy perfect. tale a fairy tale marriage then you just walk away from it like i could have done that plenty of times but what i decided to do is not to really fight the reality but it's like how can we change how can we make this different how can we change our marriage how can i change myself and then that's where it started and that's why this conversation's start is like how how can we better ourselves so we could better the relationship so we could better a family so our goal is you know if we could change each other then maybe we could change one family and we could change like a nucleus and we could change like little by little just have this ripple effect of what could happen if one person changes i want and people understand that you have the power to to be that impact mm -hmm. that you don't have to have a podcast you don't have to have like a no. tv show you don't have to be an entrepreneur you don't have no. to have you know money that only by you just sharing your message, and I think that's an important part, and what I ingrain into my clients is your message matters. Yes, your Like it doesn't matter, matters. your story matters. Like yes. there is a story behind every single human being. And I think that we've been accustomed in this culture just to either show the best side or either live on the worst side. And then we constantly buy into the story of who we were in the past. I mean, just had a conversation yeah. yesterday with a with a friend of mine who I haven't seen in years, and he was telling me, "Raúl, I see your podcast, I see your 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 uh, the stuff that you're doing with in YouTube and videos. Like, how do you maintain yourself? How do you continue to be either positive or continue to go? Like, don't you have a bad day?" And I told him, "I said I don't I don't have a fucking choice. This yeah. is my life." Like, I don't give myself a choice. I either show up and I get up every single day and I fight the battles, I fight the fear, I fight the anxiety, I fight all the, the thoughts that I have, and I don't give myself a choice to go back. Like, if I give myself a choice, if I say, okay, you know what, today I'm going to take it easy. Today I'm going to, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be the Raul that I, I know I could be, then that's the reason that a lot of us, we think that we have a choice. We think that life is promised tomorrow, but the truth is, life is not promised tomorrow. It's yesterday, not, yesterday I got a text from one of my one of my guys, uh, a guy who came to the boot camp three years ago, passed away, mm, and three years ago, and I just sad. spoke to him two weeks ago. No he was way. excited to come back to the brotherhood. He was excited oh, to 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 go to the gosh. leadership experience again, and and he was telling me how much his life changed. He was telling me how much better he's doing. He was telling me about his relationship, his business, and everything that was was Flash. growing, and and now he's dead. And because he got shot, somebody tried to rob his car and they shot him and his friend like this i mean this guy wasn't sick he was a young guy you know he wasn't supposed to be according to what we believe yeah. but look if if he was able to in the last three years and he told me this i live in the last three years like as i lived in three decades that's amazing so if that's all you have three years three months three weeks three days or three hours and if given everything you have then that's your purpose yeah and we say that often like if you go to sleep if you lay down in your pillow every night and you have the sense like I gave it all I had like I said everything that I had to say I did everything that I had to do then I mean granted for the mind is never enough 
but as long as it's okay in your heart like your heart your soul already knows like you said everything that you had to say and even like you know I tell this to the kids all the time and I tell you like when when you leave if if for some reason like we have a fight or something if you're walking out the door do I really want you to leave with that sentiment and remember me as you're driving down the highway and go crazy and something happens and I'm going to feel guilty about it. So I always think about that. It's like, let's just say the things that we have to say right now, even if it takes us a little bit more time, because I don't want to hold that resentment. I, yeah. I don't want to live it's my energy. life like that. It's right? energy. I mean, it, it, so, yeah. it just comes down to like a, as, as a businessman, you know, we think that, you know, my wife or my family, you know, we compare to a lot, compromise and we're putting you in a box and then we're gonna show up out like a warrior in, in, in our business. But the reality is that everything affects us. Yes. That when I have a fight with you or even a fight with my little girl or my boy, like when we're not in, in sync. Yeah, because it's that like energy that you I feel that carrying. energy when, yeah. I'm, when I'm executing in business. Yeah. I bring that in. So why do we bring it in? What, you know, one of the things that we teach our kids is like, don't let that energy continue to get bigger. Yeah. Like catch it fast. Like kill the monster when it's little, so it doesn't become it doesn't become resentment, it doesn't become regret. Yeah, you clean the space of whatever's clean happening. Clean the space. At the moment. Say what you have to say, and then forgive, forget, and then move on. And then flood, and I think that's a it's something that I don't know where we heard it from, but that's something that I tell um, the girls too is like forgive, forget, and then flood, because then like you need to come back and flood with something positive, with something like you just want to say it, because a lot of the times, especially for a woman, like. You know, we need that over and over again. We need that flooding over and over of like words and hugs and kisses. Even though sometimes you say like, no, we don't want it. And we try to push you away. Deep down, we do want it. We do need to feel love because at the end of the day, what we all crave for is to be loved, to be seen. And especially for women, like I know I crave that all the time. When we don't have a connection and this is part of sex is the connection is that passion. Like when we don't have that connection daily then the disconnect starts to happen. And we talk a lot about about this, but it's like we need that connection with each other. It's important, super important. So that's what the God Money Sex is about, is God, which is purpose with his energy, the universe, money, the production, the ability to bring value to the marketplace, and sex, the connection, the, the, the connection with your partner, the passion. Yeah. So we also want you to make sure that you send us your, your questions. Send us a question so we could answer these questions. We actually have two questions that our clients have asked us and I wanna give you feedback and I know you have a question for me. And we I wanna have, the question. We wanna have the this, this podcast to be interactive. We wanna include you to be part yes. of this, for, for you to join us, to follow us in YouTube, follow us in Instagram, follow us in, in Facebook, follow us everywhere and, and just engage with the community because what we're trying to build here is, is, a, is a community of like-minded individuals that believe in, in God, that believe in, in value, bringing value to the marketplace, that believe in passion, I want to go to the next level and we continue to grow as a community so that's that's the intention for the podcast that's yes. the intention for the season two because we're actually going to turn this into more of an interactive show we're going to have interviews we're going to have field gonna trips we're going to be gonna able to go we're going to other... we have vlogs that are going to we're going to complement the conversations we're going to dig deeper we're going to go deeper in this season and my intention is that it continues to serve the many couples the many men the many women out there that are looking for that insight yeah. Yeah. maybe something that we say here maybe something that we that, that we touch on and I want you to give us a, your feedback so we can continue to deliver for you the value that you deserve. I love that. Yes, that's what we're here for. Awesome. So question number one. So I have a question for you, okay. uh, babe. But before we get the question, I want to just address something and, and, and um, you know, because a lot of, lot of the people who follow us, like they, they look at our social media platforms, they look at our Instagram and they, you know, I, yeah, we're guilty so, most of the time too to, to put all the, the good stuff that's out there and, you know, because we don't want to dwell in negative. I mean, you know, people ask me like, Raul, you share your, why don't you share like the bad days? Like, I think I reserve my bad days and I share it with the clients that I have on my, the guys who hold the space for me. I'm not yeah. complaining about my bad days in into social media. And that, that's just, I have this belief that I have bad moments. I don't have bad days. I have bad moments and, and those bad moments, I don't allow those bad moments to turn into bad days. I was days. just going to say that when we have a bad or a fight or something it doesn't turn like before it would be like two three days that we could be mad at each other or something with the kids if something is negative like we catch it right away we address it and then we find a solution we, and we, fi we find what the pattern we found the awareness right yeah. so this past uh month we celebrated 20th anniversary you actually booked this beautiful hotel in uh in tulum um, mexico, mexico yeah and you wanted to surprise me because it's, vivian told me like i have this uh, this epic experience that we're gonna go to and it's a beautiful hotel so just 
whatever you want, babe, just book it because at that moment we I was so focusing busy. on yeah. the leadership summit that we had and we had, you know, all our, all our clients and their wives coming in. So all our energy was towards that and giving them an epic, epic experience yes. that I really didn't pay too much attention to <laughs> the details. The details. <laughs> and when we got there, so tell them a little bit about, about the type of resort this, this place was. So I was a little hesitant to actually book this place because, you know, I love nature. And Raul is the opposite of me. He loves he loves the noise. He loves the party. He loves people. And I just figured, like, let's do something different between the two of us. It was like, it seemed like it was between the best both worlds, but it really wasn't. This place was absolutely amazing. It's something just coming out of a, a dream book. Um, it's sitting in the middle of, you know, the, the ocean and the jungle. And it has no electricity running to the rooms. It has no internet. The Wi-Fi is very little, just maybe like in one area. I think you were trying to catch it. I was the only crazy guy in the corner looking, <laughs> looking, for, working looking for the Wi-Fi. Looking for the Wi-Fi. Um, but it's just absolutely amazing. Like it's just it brings you back to, to earth and to like wind down and not have to like rush and look for things but the the bad part about this that I was super hesitant is that it had only um baths they didn't have a shower shower heads because they believe in like not rushing so they want you to actually bathe and sit down so, in the so tub I, so I'm going in and I'm going to take baths every single day I know, that's such there a is no thing. AC there's no AC thing. there's no Wi-Fi. so automatically so I want, I want you to understand this like I'm <gasps> I'm a high energy guy, so I love to constantly be on the go. I love yes. to create. So the first day we get there and the lady is preparing as I setting us up, taking us to the room. I says, by the way, there is no AC, there's no electricity, and no shower. There is no shower. You know, the bathroom is 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 in a little what well, looks like a closet. <laughs> and I was I'm trying to compose myself just to like not to really say, What the fuck are we doing here? We're paying so much money yeah. and I don't have the amenities that we usually have in, in a resort. And I kept asking him, like, Are you sure, babe? Are you sure, babe? So I have to say, like, you're such a true and just you know like I saw you wanting to run out of there and at the same time like that battle that was going on inside of you and I we did like a quick like stories and I still have it because it's so funny like to look back it's like that battle of like I want to stay and I don't want to stay but at the same time like after the first day I would say and you could you know tell me if it's true or not you actually settled down and enjoy the beauty that God has to offer. Like well, the that's natural That's what I wanted to touch beauty. on because at, at the reason that, that I was triggered is because I am going 100 miles an hour and I'm mm -hmm. so used to going 100 miles an hour so it takes time yeah. for a man to slow down yeah. and to give him the, the jungle tour. And, and that's where I realized like I have no problem being in the jungle as long as I sign up for being in the jungle. Like I have no problem <laughs> of doing that as long as, but in my mind, my expectations was totally different because I know what you're accustomed to. Yeah. So like that's that's part of like what, what I've learned at that moment after 20 years of marriage that I I could expect anything from my wife. You like don't I, know I, me. I don't know you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know you. I need to I need to let go of who I thought my expectations were of you because as we continue to evolve, we want different things and we like different yes. things and we have to continue to surprise each other at the same time evolve with each other. Yeah. So the first day I was fucking pissed because I, I, I had I so that. much things I had to catch up on. I had clients and all this. But at the end of the day, I realized that I also needed to let go and, and I talk about this all the time, letting go. And then my, my group, and uh, our mastermind group, like the theme that were giving me was just a, uh, medicine, my own medicine. Be they there, Raul. Be I, present, like, Raul. Adapt, adjust, and execute, <laughs> motherfucker. Like, like, be grateful for the things you have. Everything that I teach, they like automatically, they were sending it back to me. And I appreciate that because I'm able to to learn also. Like, again, we're not perfect. Like, catch myself when I'm being ungrateful, when I'm when I'm getting triggered, when I'm not appreciating life. And yeah, yeah, that's when I shifted. When I realized, like, fuck, I need to appreciate. There's a beautiful setting. There's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I need to enjoy the moment because yeah. I'm spending all this money anyways. Might as well enjoy the moment. I saw you and, shift. It was a huge, was a it shift. was a huge, huge shift for you because it's like you actually got to appreciate what was in front of you, and you know. And at the end, I think you even said something to me or along the way. You said, "You know, babe, we should create experiences, something we don't expect of each other, because there's some things that I don't expect from you." and that you want to bring out to the table. So I think that's part of like marriage or where we are right now or where you could be if you're listening. It's like, can you be open about what's happening in front of you? Can you be open to the experience that could happen in your marriage and not put marriage in a box and think like marriage has to be this way after 20 years? 
that's the reason that's the reason other. why we are where we are in this world like you know because we think that marriage has to be a certain way or the women have to be a certain way or we have to think a certain way or dress a certain way like no we are ever changing like it was so beautiful like the evolution that i'm going through because it's like you come back and you start to remember mm. all over again like who i am and god through god and you know like that for me that 20 year anniversary was just like the best we're never gonna forget that i I'm mean taking, i'm I, taking baths every I single love, day i love the bath experience <laughs> i love watching you finding a <laughs> shower to how to take a fucking bath you're like i went to there was they had a spa and it was hot but it was hot so that's they the cool thing about it it was so hot that all I did is I put the water in the bathtub and so I just cool. immersed myself because I was it was no AC and it was like a hundred degrees in there. Yes. So it was it was a great experience. I love it. I recommend every single every, <laughs> every single, single person to, to go. go. Twenty year anniversary, go to Asulik and you go back into the jungle. Go so, with an open mind and an open heart. And I, I think that's the way that we should be in marriage. Like have an open mind, have an open heart, and be curious about each other. I know we say this a lot. It's like you don't know the other person. Can you be curious about it and fi- try to figure out or just let them figure themselves out so whatever comes forth, that you just love that person, love that version of that person. And learn to surprise each other, just like you surprised me. So yeah. now we're going to have like a new a new tradition, surprise each other every single <laughs> every single year with something that we don't expect from each other. Oh, God. So so the question is, so I had, I had a, a guy send me a, a message and because I, I put it in my... Instagram. I said, what questions do you want me to answer or my wife want, you want my wife to answer or, or for me to answer? And they said, I have my, I have a wife that have been married for 15 years and we're going through a rough patch and I growing, I'm growing, I'm doing the work, I'm, um, I'm doing all the things that I, that I think that she needs me to do, but she's constantly triggering me and pushing my buttons and I'm doing the best that I can to not be caught up in that energy but she triggers the fuck out of me and I want to go to war and I'm thinking, is this going to be it? Mm. Or do I, how long do I have to stay to put in the work until I realize that this is not going to go anywhere? And this is 15 years of being married. So Alejandro, he's my wise little owl. And from time to time, like he says things that are so profound. And I remember him saying one time, like, Mom, the people that you love the most know your biggest triggers and that's so true you know like we know each other's triggers and I think a lot of the times you know for women like we we throw or we we th- throw daggers or throw these triggers or kick you in the balls because we're looking for attention hmm. because it comes from a place of fear it comes from a place like you know I have no idea what happened in the last 15 years but then it comes after 15 years like you see this guy changing and you don't know is it gonna last is it something that he's just trying out for right now you know like where are you going with all of this so I'm I'm punching you I'm hitting you in the balls because I want to see if this is really true now I know that um it's annoying for the guy or you know for for the person that's in this situation but if you could get past that like if you could just see like if somebody gave you a vision of what your life would look like if you would get past this moment right now and it would be something beautiful and per- not perfect but just beautiful and, and it's still in the relationship and get past it and you could see like the end picture the end result and it would be exactly what you wanted it to be wouldn't you push through mm. because a lot of the times well you know what the reason why i used to do that it's because i was looking for attention one it came from a place of fear because you know when you were changing when you're doing all these things it's like okay now now you're going to change you've been an asshole for the last 10 years and all of a sudden now it's going to be like I'm going to be a cheerleader and the pom-poms are going to come out and all these things it's like no it doesn't happen overnight and timing is different for both of us as it is for you than it is for me Hmm. like give her time give her time give yourself time and give her time I would say and that's and that's pretty much what we were probably uh, you know, I relate to this to that question because that's what we were probably when we were 15 years into the marriage yeah or probably sooner than that like 12 or 13 years into <laughs> the marriage so here's what I told the guy too uh, and to hold the space uh-huh. learn how to hold the space but not to to be the container and not to be the garbage can because I think that a lot of men what we be, what we do is we become the garbage can yeah meaning we we want to be the pleaser and we said okay whatever you want honey just because we don't we don't want to have that trigger we don't have want to have the battle 
And yeah. I'd rather just not argue with you and give you what you want and become the pleaser. But see, another thing too is like sometimes we need to have those battles because when we have those conversations, those are like not necessarily like I'm not saying like go and fight and like have have this like full force fight, but have those deep conversations that really are like not that everybody wants to have but it, it brings out so much stuff that is like the truth behind it but this that's the container when you when the guy becomes a container when a man becomes a container okay. he could allow the woman to throw those daggers but he doesn't make it personal because yeah. it doesn't affect him because he knows who he is and he yeah. knows what he Don't stands personal, for and, yeah. and really he he's just seeing his woman as somebody who's looking for attention not somebody who's triggering him or wants something from him but it's just feedback for him to to become stronger yeah. and to really see that he needs to work himself. If he's getting triggered, that means that he needs to work himself yeah, because the securities are being exposed on him. Because most of the time, it's always about the shit that we're feeling inside, yeah. not about what the other person is saying. Yeah, and he, can he be strong enough to to take care of this woman that's in front of him? Like they've been together fifteen years. There is love there. Like don't forget about that love that got you there and and be that like you said be that container for her like if she wants to go crazy like go crazy eventually it will end like she can't continue that show forever hopefully she'll realize it too like but at least he did everything he could yeah to help the space power. and he, there's no there's a resentment there is no regret he did everything his power and then if it wasn't meant to be then at least he did everything from his side to contain the storm but he didn't bench to become a pleaser to become the the garbage can that a woman continue to just throw up on you and you just you know take it and same i think i think the same goes for women too the, yeah. the guys some some men too oh, tap into the feminine energy and they want to complain they want to you know become the victim and the woman is like what the fuck i'm i'm giving you everything that you want i'm giving you sex i'm i'm putting you food on the table like i'm giving you like, everything what else and, do you want, you want from me? to do and what then else? most men is just because they're going through their own shit you know yeah. it's never about the other person it's always about what's going on with you yeah i love that so yeah we could answer questions on on um our podcast every week so, so keep sending us the questions uh, we have another to question too that you had from no, we could do that we could do that I have another question you don't have a question no, you already forgot the question <laughs> alright so she doesn't, have a, she doesn't have the question so uh, another another uh, thing that I want every single one of you to do is just tag a friend into the podcast share this podcast with your friends share you this podcast with your husband with your wife with the people around you as we continue to evolve in this podcast we would love to to also create a, an event later on in 2020, the Got Money and Sex event. If we yeah, have enough couples. enough people that are supporting this and want to learn more and they want to kind of have like a workshop, we're open to have that conversation too and see the Got Money and Sex you know weekend. And oh, we'll probably, that sounds amazing! We'll probably do it in uh, in uh, in the jungle. Just we'll, like do we, as, we'll do it in a We'll do it in a lake. No, no shower, no electricity. We're going to the jungle. No internet. Let go. Yeah, and I just thought of it too. Like um, our media team created. Um, my youtube channel so for the women that are have questions a lot of the podcasts are there there's small clips of it so we're gonna have follow them, us we're gonna yeah. have the team put it at the bottom yeah. of this video and if uh and if you listen to, to itunes or itunes or spotify we'll have our team put all the links in the notes of this podcast as well that's amazing yeah so thank you guys for listening thank you for being part of season one please continue to follow us on season two we are just so in love with everything that we are creating this is this is our baby what we create here is just it's so full of love it's so full of passion it's so full of who we are so continue to listen to us continue to follow us you know there's so many amazing things happen hopefully there's there's like more events for for couples because it's really something that we believe in. We believe that, you know, we change one family at a time that could change the whole world. Beautiful. So listen to us, follow us in, in Instagram, follow us in Facebook, follow us in YouTube, follow us everywhere except for our bedroom so we keep it private. I like that. Learn it, live, live it, experience, experience it. it. Love, Love life. life.